happy Sunday, everyone, and welcome to Awareness. I'm your host, Billie Jean Shaw. Today we are celebrating 50 years of hip hop, one of the many playlists of black culture. Recently, to mark the anniversary of the birth of hip hop, several artists were inducted into the National Hip Hop Museum Hall of Fame in Washington, D.C., including a hip hop legend that lives right here in Columbia, George Godfrey. And we are honored to have Mr. Godfrey on the show today. Thank you so much for being here and congratulations. Thank you, appreciate it. This is going to be a fun interview. Of course, we are going to talk about you being inducted into the Museum Hall of Fame. You even brought uh, some of the awards that you were presented to. Again, congratulations. But I want people to know who you are. You, 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 Mr. Godfrey, but you're really sweet G yes, in, the, in the world of <laughs> hip hop, okay? Let's yes. talk about your journey. How did it all get started for you? Well, it goes all the way back to 1975. I was working at a club, helped build a club actually called The Fever in New York City in the Bronx. And um, it was a regular club that uh, the DJ was the type of DJ that plays a lot of top 40 stuff instead of, uh, it was in, the club itself was in a poor neighborhood, mm -hmm. okay, basically African American neighborhood. And um, they had a white DJ and he played a lot of downtown stuff. The customers that came in, you know, were like, they would sit there and listen to the music, but he would leave out around uh, midnight and go downtown to play. And he would leave, you know, a spiel of tape running. So I totally you know, asked the owner one day, I said, look, can I get up and spend a little bit? I, I know what I'm doing, because I had watched the other DJ. So he said, let me see what you got. So I got up there and started spending a lot of good stuff, uh, Tina Marie, uh, Isaac Hayes, and mm -hmm. sounds like that. And the crowd was really digging it. So I said, well, this is really good. Let me see if I can do something else. Yeah. So I tried to call and response. You know, everybody say, ho, and I'm saying, oh, yeah. let me hear you scream. Ah, and they started <laughs> screaming. I was like, okay, this is fun. Let me keep going. And it just built from that. And one night, the um, owner's son came to the club, Sal Albatello, a very good friend of mine. He came in and he was listening and he was like, what, what is that guy up there doing? And uh, some of the customers that were sitting there that, that had been coming a lot, they said, he's doing rapping. He said, what the heck is rapping? He said, well, you know, he talks over the music and rhymes and stuff like that, tells stories while the music's playing. And so Sal looked up at me and was like, okay, let's see what you got. So I just continued playing like that and he really fell into it. And so he went and asked his father, could he turn this over 30 crowd club hmm. into a younger crowd club. Yeah. Wanted to cater to the younger kids because the neighborhood was full of them. So after much to do about trying to get it done with his dad, he came down and he said, gee, we got a Tuesday night. I looked at him and said, who goes to a club on a Tuesday? <laughs> he said, well, that's what my dad said. We got to break it in on a Tuesday to see if it really works. Mm -hmm. So we opened up um, one night on a Tuesday after redecorating the club and everything and um, was playing music. We had sent out handwritten flyers, well, photocopied flyers mm -hmm. that we had kids go around and spread it around the neighborhood, put it in stores and everything. And um, the first night we had a C CEO a uh, certificate of occupancy for 250, right? That opening night, we had 400 kids show up and we only had five employees working. Wow, to be in New York City just at the height in the birth of hip hop and to even hear someone say, what is rapping? You know, that, that would be foreign language to us now because that's on all the airways. What was that like for you? It was, for me, it was great because like you, like you just said, it's a part of every venue or every genre of music right now. Mm -hmm. You can hear rap music and gospel, jazz, opera, uh, you name it, it's there. And they had first said, no, nah, it's just going to be a fad. It's just coming out. It's, it, it'll be gone in another year. People don't really like it. But as time went on, it just built and built and built. And we had so many different people come through the club um, as artists and also as guests. We had news companies coming from as far as Australia to do a story on this. We were in the Time magazine. We were in uh, a couple other magazines where they wanted to know what is this phenomenon that's going on in Bronx, New York, about this club that's in a ghetto type area, basically, mm -hmm. and it's attracting kids from all over. We had kids coming from Connecticut, Jersey, all five boroughs, 
and from Philly. They would drive up just to hang out in the club because it became so popular. The wow. thing was, if, if you can get into the FIFA or you go to the FIFA, you're somebody. And we had a strict rule, you know, had to be, you know, the age limit and everything mm -hmm. because we served alcohol. But they wanted to come in and hear the music because they had heard that so many different people come up there and they never knew who they were going to see. Wow. One day, um, one evening, a Saturday evening, we had um, Bernie Casey mm -hmm. and Sidney Poitier come up there. They were looking what? for an uh, area to shoot part of a film they were doing. Wow. And I didn't know it until I was coming out of the DJ booth and they were standing by the coat room, just two big guys, right? I walked past them, how you doing, how you doing? I said, oh. <laughs> I said, you? He said, yes, Cindy Poitier. I said, oh my God. Oh you know, my it was goodness. It was great. It was so much fun just to, you know, to speak to them just for a minute or so. And they stayed for about an hour or so and then they said goodbye. They had another spot they wanted to check out. So that was great. Then all the media coverage that we got from, like I said, from different companies, mm -hmm. countries, London, Australia came over. We had an article written up about us in Japan. So the club really was the center of attention in that part of the Bronx. It's not only were you attracting high celebrities, you were attracting everyone from across the area, from the different states, from the boroughs, but also you met Curtis Blow and then <laughs> magic happened. Yes. We're gonna take a quick break. When we return, we're gonna talk about what happened in 1983 and how this thing really took off for Mr. George Godfrey, AKA Sweet G. Everybody stay tuned, we'll be right back. <laughs> 